Hello everyone, um, my name is uh, Mr. Tommy Lee. I'm a grade 6 and grade 7 science teacher. Today is my turn to uh, share some information with you. So uh, I'm really happy because this is my first time <laughs> as a science teacher to share what I thought and what I feel through a scientific perspective. And the, uh, I told my uh, students, um, uh, please don't laugh. If they laugh, they have to write apology letter. I'm just kidding, okay. So today, um, my topic is science, world, and God. The verses I'm going to use is John uh, chapter nine, verse five. Well, I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. That's the Bible verse I'm going to use today. About science, um, when, when I was a student, when, it, when we talked about science, we always think about this picture because that's what I've uh, been educated, the theory, theory of uh, evolution, or Newton, or this, this man, Thomas Edison, and this man, Albert Einstein. The first time you mentioned about science, this reflects in my mind, those, those pictures. So through learning science, I always think about uh, what is life is, because uh, according to uh, the uh, uh, Darwin, we're just a type of living organism, and then die, and then it's gone. So that's why this makes me think about what is life is. But today, um, I want to talk about two beautiful theory in physics. I try my best to uh, use my simple word to explain uh, as, uh, as clear as possible. Hope you can uh, follow my uh, paces. So there are two great achievements in modern science. One is the, you know, Albert Einstein, the theory of relativity. Another one is the uh, quantum mechanics, the two theories, beautiful theories. And uh, the theory of relativity actually studied about uh, something very big, for example, like galaxy, planet, stars, black hole, blah, blah, blah. But the quantum physics is to study very, very tiny, small thing. For example, all the materials made of atom, right? We're stu study about that. Atom, structure of atom, you know, the uh, electron, neutron. So today I'm talking about that. So uh, about the theory of relativity, as we know, we forget about the math part because math is so difficult, right, for most of us. So we only conclude the, uh, we talked about the famous conclusion, okay, a, a few of the famous conclusion. So uh, let's talk about this. Motion is relative. What does that mean, motion is relative? That means, in, the, in another word, that means you cannot tell you are uh, in motion or at rest. Even though you are sitting in your um, classroom, listen to teacher, you are not move any, right? But actually, uh, as, as a reference in the solar system, you are moving, you are orbiting the sun. Because you are on Earth, you are orbiting the sun. So, so that's why, that's what that means. Can you understand that? Motion is relative, right? You cannot really tell if you are in motion or at rest. That's a famous one. Second one, uh, the second conclusion is the, uh, the moving object's time goes slower than the non-moving objects, relatively, okay? Which means the moving clock running slow. Think about, if you have a clock on your wrist and you keep running, what happened? Compared to your classmate, your time is getting slower. It's very interesting, right, isn't it? It's unbelievable. Before the theory of relativity, all the scientists feels like uh, the time is absolute, you know, not change, right? So, you know, there's one picture, you see, have you ever heard about two brothers? So older brother and younger brother, and uh, older brother uh, stayed on Earth, and younger brother did uh, what's called the, uh, the space travel, right? And then when the younger brother came back, his older brother has become really old, right? Have you ever heard about that? It's very interesting, isn't it? So actually this is famous, the twin paradox. Another one is uh, the movie is called Interstellar. I, I don't know how many of you have, have been watching Interstellar. So this is very interesting and a scientific uh, movie. I highly suggest it. Do you remember, if you watched it before, do you remember there's one thing about the Miller planet? 
So which means they they try to land in a Miller planet because the Miller planet is so close to the black hole. So the the orbiting speed of Miller planet is really fast, or you know really fast. Uh, the one hour on Miller planets is like equal to seven hours on Earth. So remember when they came back, retrieved the data, came back from Miller planet back to the sh but the spaceship. His partner uh, already 23 years older, right? Is 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 really interesting? So actually, uh, this conclusion has been uh, attested by uh, Hafali Keating uh, experiment in 1971. They do the experiment. They use four at uh, atomic clocks and two put uh, two atomic clocks. They put on um, airplane. Let the airplane orbiting the Earth. And the one uh, uh, atomic clocks uh, put on Earth as reference when the uh, the fly uh, arrived back on Earth, they compare the time of those clocks. Interesting thing is this: the uh, the uh, the clocks on the airplane both either faster or slower than the the clocks on Earth. So that's the experiment they did. The test is this is real. The time is can be uh, uh, the moving objects can be can be slower. Next conclusion I want to talk about the uh, the speed of light. Okay, the speed of light, according to the, the the theory of relativity, speed of light is constant in all situations. That means the speed of light will not change. So we use we used to use c represents the speed of light. The speed of light we use approximation is about 300 million meter per second. That's very fast speed. So, what's that mean? The speed of light is constant. For example, I have a light right here. So the light will travel through the speed of light to this person's eye, right? So there's no problem. Okay, this is constant, right? What if this light has a speed v, right? So normally we will think the speed will be when the speed of light reaches to the eyes. Normally we think the speed will be a c plus v, right? Right? That's what we think like according to law of physics. But actually, it's not. Okay? They've been tested. The still the same thing. 300 million meter per second. It's like this. I will demonstrate. Use my flashlight right here. When I switch on. The light reach on Earth is through the speed of light. And uh, what if I give my hand a velocity or the speed like this? I switch on, right? So still, the speed of light doesn't change. So actually, this one also has, has been uh, tested too by the scientist. So uh, it's uh, uh, my Colson Morley um, experiment uh, in 18. 87. Actually, the original purpose for this, for this experiment is they tried to find the ether, but uh, they failed. You know? But a very interesting thing is they realized through these uh, experiments that uh, the speed of light actually do not change. So they thought that probably is a mistake to test many times, many times, many times. And then the speed of light still the same, the constant, 300 million meters per second. So. Uh, in 2000, uh, no, no, in 1905, Albert Einstein, the theory of relativity came out, and for that, Albert Einstein told us, "Yeah, you're not wrong. Speed of light do not change. Also, it has been proved by the Maxwell equation as well." Next one, math and energy are both equivalent and same. What does that mean? What does that mean? The math and uh, the energy are both equi equivalent and same. Actually, you probably know, some of you probably know this famous equation, E equal mc, mc squared, right? What's E? E is energy, m is mass, where we call matter, and the c is represent the speed of light. So actually, this equation has been proved works uh, for the nuclear, nuclear power plant or the nuclear bomb. When they try to shoot a one neutron into the uranium-235, and uh, the number of particles before explosion and the number of particles after the explosion is the same. But the mass 
it's changing. Right? After an explosion, the mass definitely has become lighter and the release energy. It's, it's, it's like when you play a build, uh, the, the, what is it called, the, the table, table board, right? I don't, <laughs> I forgot the term, right? So it's like you, like that. So uh, they have been tested. So any, any uh, matters, materials, okay, one gram, any, anything, anything, material, one gram, okay, is equal about 90 trillion joules of energy. 19 trillion joules, how many zero? 13 zeros behind. This is too much energy, too much energy. What does that mean? That means, you know, the atomic bomb drop in Japan is about, about 54 trillion joules of energy. You know, you, you know that you can compare with that, right? So according to that, uh, I would like to say my, my, uh, my body is like a 150,000 uh, nuclear bomb, right? It's, 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 it's quite incredible, right? So, okay, next one. Next one. Nothing can travel at or faster than the speed of light. So this also has been tested by uh, William uh, Bertozzi. Uh, it's called the Bertozzi experiment uh, in MIT uh, uh, at in uh, 1962. So uh, what's the experiment about? Uh, he used electron. You know the electron is a small matter, right? So he used electron to accelerate the electron, right? To read to to accelerate accelerate accelerate. Let's see what happened, and then. They realize that the uh, no matter how it accelerates, the electron can never never reach the speed of light. But meanwhile, the mass increases. It's very interesting, isn't it? Right? The mass increases means what? That means for some reason the energy has been stored in the electron. Understand? In the electron. So, and. Uh, you know, so that's why they make the conclusion. So the uh, the matter probably just a compressed form of energy, compressed form of energy, which means everything you touches, you feel, is energy. Can you believe that? That's that's amazing. This I, I couldn't believe that. I don't understand. But the, what, 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 every time when I touch something, I feel uh, this is the energy. That's amazing. So seems like. You know the uh, the speed of light uh, become the uh, what is it called the uh, the speed limit of the universe. N nothing can travel at or faster than the speed of light. According to this, right, uh, that makes me think about Nikola Tesla quote. Right. So if you want to find the secret of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and uh, vibration. The Nikola Tesla. I, you know what I. I sort of understand why he say like that because if this is energy, you know, it has potential energy waiting, waiting, uh, waiting us to to ex develop or explore. It's amazing. According to that, you know this, right? Can you get what it is? Time machine, right? Time machine may may, may not be possible because if you want travel back in time. You have to you have to reach the speed of light even faster than speed of light, but according to the experiment, you can't. Right? For, so far, we can't. Right? The uh, the uh, our human technology we can't. No, we cannot reach the speed of light. Okay. So here's the things. According to uh, Albert Einstein, so everything is relative. Right? What does that mean? Okay, I'll give you an example. You have probably seen this picture before, right? Have you ever seen this picture? And have you ever seen this picture? A dress and the sneaker shoes. I'm telling you, okay, for me, when I see this picture, I see a purple for the dress. It's a purple color and dark brown. Okay, I see this color. And uh, what about the shoes? Shoes, I see mint and pink, right? So that makes me think about, okay, why is the speed of light is constant? Why isn't there anything that moves faster than speed of light? There are probably three possible explanations. Maybe speed of life knows something. It's living things we don't know, right? 
And second thing, probably to speed the light, maybe it's our consciousness, right? Which means our consciousness, we actually observe our consciousness. The last one, maybe our world actually is not real, simulated, right? Like you play computer game, right? But only light is real. So you can see the doctor professor Li Sichan, he has been doing the uh, experiment about finger reading experiments. This is a very interesting experiment because this experiment shows that uh, the, the uh, high dimensional uh, worlds truly exist. But also through this experiment, when the students covered blindfold their eye, that means no light, they cannot read anything, right, by fingers. But when they unfold it, they can read it. So interesting. That means our world actually, maybe light, only the light is the real thing. So that's why, what the Bible said about light. I use this verse again, right? John chapter 9, 5. Well, I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. You can see the science try to find out light. Um, they cannot, right? According to quantum physics, right? The uh, what is light? There's an experiment shows that light shows the same behavior of waves. That means frequency and energy, but also shows the behavior of a particle when they have a detector where somebody observe it. So. That's why they, they have the conclusion, life might be wave and particle duality, two characteristics. So think about our Jesus, right? Our Jesus, like, in, according to the Bible, Jesus is God, 100% God and 100% human, right? So I don't understand why, how could it be 100% God, 100% human? Well, I, I don't know, right? But in the Bible, Colossians uh, chapter 2, verse 9 said, For in him the whole fullness of deity dwell bodily, right? It's, 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 first time, lies have similar uh, similarity with the Jesus, right? So, so according to this, we can say that in another word, all matters which we believe uh, wants to be the solid particles are able to show, right, the a characteristic, both of particle and waves in unique cases. That means everything probably when we see it, the behavior like particle, matter. When we do not see it, the behavior like energy. So that's why it gave me the question. Is our world really real or, you know, physical or unreal or illusionary, right? Or in our world is huge, maybe our world just like a huge database, simulated city is where we live in. And, uh, like you play games, you know, different kind of game like simulated, right? They, they have computer algorithm. For example, you play sudden attack or counter strike. What you see right here, they probably see all the things, right? The city, everything block. But actually in order to save the, the, uh, the computer's power, the things you do not see actually do not exist. Maybe our world is like that. So Neuralink recently, you know, the Elon Musk, very famous billionaire, uh, recently, he had uh, posed this one, right? The chips. That means that they, this is the chip that uh, implanted to the humans, uh, humans brain to uh, what's called for medical purposes. Yeah, for medical purposes, like to cure um, some uh, brain damage. For example, memory loss, right? For example, like hearing loss. For example, blindness, uh, depression, addiction, and some brain damages, right? That make me think about that. That the uh, our memory is really can be created by some thing, right? Actually, there's experiments that that just show the experiment in the University of the South Carolina, uh, South uh, I'm sorry, South uh, California. The professor uh, Professor Theodore Berger he used monkey to train monkey. Uh, they put one chip in the monkey's mind and to train him the combination of the quote, so a combination of the number, and then the monkey cat got some trick. And then they removed the chips to another monkey that's never have been trained. So interesting happened. The monkey knows all the combinations. That means our memory can be a uh, transfer, you know. So if this is really our world is the database or computer, who is a programmer, right, from scientific uh, perspective, you cannot answer this question, right? You cannot answer this question. 
But so that's why the the scientists they were really confused and shocked and oh what am I gonna do right? So maybe they think our world is just absolutely illogical or irrational doesn't make any sense. But Bible can answer those questions. You know, Bible can answer all these questions for science actually. You know, like for example, I'm the light. They answer the light. John chapter nine verse five, and then. Mark eleven, chapter eleven,、uh, verse twenty-three, talking about if your faith is is in, like the size of a what is called a, the、um, uh, the master seeds, right? You can move the mountain. Actually, they talk about quantum physics. They talk about the, our consciousness can can decide the, or determine the matters. Can you believe that? Actually, there's a lot of potential of a human human body. We don't know. We don't have, you know, seems like some part of our has been locked. You know. And then, is our world real, physical, or illusion? Right? Do your thoughts and conscience determine the matters? Actually, Bible already answered that question. Our world actually maybe is、uh, is definitely is created by God. You know, as a Christian, right? So, is our world a huge database? It's 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 simulated, or who is behind it? Right? From scientists'、uh, perspective, you can now answer this question. So, but. From Bible, they give you the answer. So, to be th- through this, we can we can know that、uh, Bible actually is not controversial with science, right? The more you study science, the more you realize that we're close to God. So that's why the、uh, I would like to say the Bible not it can be a study guide. You know, you know, you're going to take a midterm exam. It's a study guide for the scientists to refer, right? What do you think? This is what I'm thinking through this. And、uh, also, we would like to show, for example, if I would like to show this one, right? If our our world, okay, our life is living the two-dimensional world, this is the past, present, and future. The Jesus Christ as this cup, you know, this is three-dimensional solid, right? And I、touched this two-dimensional world. As you know, that the cup has infinite layer for to to、uh, to do two-dimensional. Our Jesus Christ has touched that. That means we only can see part of the Jesus Christ. The infinite part we don't know about God. So that's why. So through this, I want to show you this through dimension. So you can think about that. Okay. So I hope. Today's demonstration and the science can give you some idea and think. The science, we s- could not answer those questions, but Bibles give us answer. Nothing is relative, but only the Word of God is the absolute things in our world exist. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for、uh, today's messages. I hope the, through these messages can. Open our students' mind that、uh, you are the only real, true things in our world. Nothing can compare com- compare with you. Thank you, Lord. Just pray in Jesus' name. Amen.